if you don't mind, I want to dial back to the beginning of mm. how did this occur to you? You're an actress and you're a writer and you're a director. At what moment did you go, oh, all these things are working great, but I think I want to add another element to this and say, let's bring some children in on the autism spectrum and see mm. how they react. What was the inspiration for that? The real inspiration was my career was going very, very well. Um, as you said, I've been an actress at the Royal Shakespeare Company, so I was playing major roles in Stratford-upon-Avon. But something was niggling away in the back of my, my soul, really, not just my mind, that Shakespeare's power for communication wasn't being tapped, or I wasn't tapping it enough. I wanted to explore what else Shakespeare could do outside the confines of theatre. So I took a big leap and I left my very nice career and I started a very small company set up to uh, take Shakespeare to people who had no access to the arts. So it wasn't particularly autism to start off with. I did some workshops in prisons. I did workshops with children who um, just had never been to a theatre. And I was working with Shakespeare, concentrating, as I was saying, on how the connection between eyes and love and the mind come together in the moment. I started working in a special school where there was a group of children with autism. I was told that they wouldn't be able to access my games and I said, well, I would like to try. And so began my work with that particular group who I stayed with for three years and really who taught me how to teach them without those particular children who are now young adults. This is a long time ago. Uh, this work would never ever have taken off. But I found that everything I was exploring with Shakespeare was directly the opposite to what a person with autism might experience. So Shakespeare explores moments where you, you understand what it is to see something and you make eye contact with somebody and, and understand the inside of them. And someone with autism seems to present uh, the reality that they find that very difficult. So these games take moments of Shakespeare where you can practice feeling and practice your expression uh, and offer the children the chance to practice. And it can take as long as you like. It can take five minutes or five years. It really doesn't matter. Um, the other thing I discovered was the rhythm of Shakespeare's language, which is written on the something called the iambic pentameter, which is a heartbeat. Every session and these productions begin with us repeating the rhythm of a heartbeat quite slowly and it acts as a very powerful and calming transition for the children. So the power of the rhythm of Shakespeare's language calms the children and then the content of the language and the poetry allows them freedom of expression. It's, it's a remarkable, remarkable concept. And of course, we're talking about the Hunter Heartbeat Method. Uh, we're here with Kelly Hunter, uh, and she's helping us to understand this really, uh, I think, quite incredible concept, how, how you came to put these two things together. Mm -hmm. So once, once you began to see what you could do with these individuals who are on the autism spectrum, what kinds of progress were you seeing from these individuals that really made you want to pursue this further? Great question. Um, incredible progress. In the very moment of playing with myself and the four actors I started with, the children would quite literally come to life in a way that they in other places didn't do. And their parents would come and watch the workshops and really remark on this and say that they'd never seen their children play and communicate in this way before. Uh, some children, as I said, more than, more than others. Some children took longer. As we know, everybody on the spectrum is an individual human being and, and just saying that you have autism, well, it's just a beginning of understanding every single human being. Um, so some children really started to make eye contact better or, or practice their facial recognition. All these targets are in the games that we started to develop. And some children took much longer but then you'd have an amazing moment with them, say, six months down the line. I'll tell you a very brief anecdote. I work, um, I've worked in the same school for the last five years, and after two years of working with the same children, one young boy who never speaks but used to come to the sessions and make heartbeats, he broke his arm, and he was taken to the waiting room of a hospital by his teacher. He's always very anxious when he goes to hospitals. He sat in the waiting room and without any prompting from his teacher, he took his good arm and he started 
beating out the rhythm of a heartbeat, just like he does with me, as if he remembered that that's what calms him. And he started saying a little bit of a hello, which he does very, very, um, very occasionally. And he did that for about 20 minutes. He calmed himself down, remembering that this work that he's done with me offers him the chance to do that. And then apparently he said goodbye. He repeated the goodbye, goodbye. And his teacher was so excited, she actually called me from the waiting room because she just couldn't believe that he'd made the connection um, that if he did the, 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 the exercises that he does with me, it would have a good effect. Wow. So we're interested in not just what happens in the moment now when these children receive these games, but actually the effect that it may be having on them uh, in places that we couldn't possibly understand. And again, you have a book um, yeah. that's that's out that people can access on Amazon.com. And the name of the book is Shakespeare's Heartbeat? Yes, it's called Shakespeare's Heartbeat, Drama Games for Children with Autism. Okay. And so, uh, you know, one of the big questions that I wanted to ask you is, do you have a certification process? Is there a place where people can go and, and learn and, and learn these things or are, 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 the book is going to do it for them? Uh, it, the, there's, there's two answers. The book is, your, is the first port of call. And as I said, I've written it so that someone for whom certification would just be impossible, either financially or geographically, they can access these games with this book. However, if you're very keen, um, there are two ways to go about it. Ohio State University, where the research has been uh, taken on, they would be the first people to be in contact with. And in fact, they are running a symposium on my work this coming May, May 2015. So there are details on the Ohio State University website about the symposium and I will be there I will be in the states in Ohio in May and I'm offering public workshops uh, we're just organizing the dates of that but as far as I know it's the week of May the 13th so that's something that you can follow and you can if you certainly go to my website or the Ohio website you can find out more about that and if you want to come to Ohio I will be there giving workshops as Yet, currently, I'm not giving um, certificates for this work. Uh, the way it's been working is people have been getting in touch with me more and more from a, around the globe. And if they're very interested, then um, I go and visit them and they gather 10 or 12 teachers or parents together and I give a few days workshops. So if you are very keen, if you're here listening to this and you're very keen for me to come and work with you, then you can get in touch with me via the website.